How much more satisfying had we been placed in a garden custom-made for us, its other occupants put there for us to use as we saw fit? There is a celebrated story in the Western tradition like this, except that not quite everything was there for us. There was one particular tree of which we were not to partake, a tree of knowledge. Knowledge and understanding and wisdom were forbidden to us in this story. We were to be kept ignorant. But we couldn't help ourselves. We were starving for knowledge, created hungry, you might say. This was the origin of all our troubles. In particular, it's why we no longer live in a garden. We found out too much. So long as we were incurious and obedient, I imagine, we could console ourselves with our importance and centrality and tell ourselves that we were the reason the universe was made. As we began to indulge our curiosity, though, to explore, to learn how the universe really is, we expelled ourselves from Eden. Angels with a flaming sword were set as sentries at the gates of paradise to bar our return. The gardeners became exiles and wanderers. Occasionally we mourn that lost world, but that, it seems to me, is maudlin and sentimental. We could not happily have remained ignorant forever. There is in this universe much of what seems to be design. Every time we come upon it, we breathe a sigh of relief. We're forever hoping to find, or at least to safely deduce, a designer. But instead, we repeatedly discover that natural processes, collisional selection of worlds, say, or natural selection of gene pools, or even the convection pattern in a pot of boiling water, can extract order out of chaos and deceive us into deducing purpose where there is none. In everyday life, we often sense uh, in the bedrooms of teenagers or in national politics, that chaos is natural and order imposed from above. While there are deeper regularities in the universe than the simple circumstances we generally describe as orderly, all that order, simple and complex, seems to derive from laws of nature established at the Big Bang, or maybe earlier, rather than as a consequence of belated intervention by an imperfect deity. God is to be found in the details, is the famous dictum of the German scholar Abbe Warburg. But amid much elegance and precision, the details of life in the universe also exhibit haphazard, jury-rigged arrangements, and much poor planning. What shall we make of this? An edifice abandoned early in construction by the architect? The evidence so far at least, and laws of nature aside, does not require a designer. Maybe there's one hiding, maddeningly unwilling to be revealed. Sometimes it seems a very slender hope. The significance of our lives and our fragile planet is then determined only by our own wisdom and courage. We are the custodians of life's meaning. We long for a parent to care for us, to forgive us our errors, to save us from our childish mistakes. But knowledge is preferable to ignorance. Better by far to embrace the hard truth than a reassuring fable. If we crave some cosmic purpose, then let us find ourselves a worthy goal.